Leonard was afraid he'd die of lung cancer. He never thought it would be COPD. You always think you have more time than you do, and you really don't. You can quit. Call 1-800-QUIT-NOW for help getting free medication. Hi. Happening now. A woman counts 51 bullet holes inside of the home where police shoot and kill the father of her child. I'm Devin Clark. Coming up, we'll tell you what SAPD says happened leading up to the gunfire and why that woman says she still needs more answers. A tense time in the city of Louisville as the grand jury returns an indictment in the shooting death of Breonna Taylor, who's facing charges and reaction to the indictment next. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg returns to the Supreme Court one final time. I'm Camila Bernal in Washington, and coming up, we talk about her legacy and the next steps for her replacement. And temperatures will be climbing over the next few days. I'll tell you how much warmer it's going to get and have the latest on a potential cold front coming right up. Plus, coronavirus in college. Many colleges are making standardized tests to get in optional. How long is that going to last? The News at 5 starts right now. And first and five, we have breaking news on the search for 17-year-old Sebastian Eduardo Vasquez Carpio. It is not good news. San Antonio police confirming today skeletal remains found in West Bear County on Sunday belong to Eduardo. The 17 year old disappeared on Friday. Two days later, a body was found inside a burned stolen car in the 6600 block of Calle Duarte, which the medical examiner identified as Eduardo. No, so far, no arrests have been made and police are still investigating. Officers are supposed to help people. They're not supposed to just come over here and shoot to kill. A dire need for answers. We now know the name of a man who was shot and killed by San Antonio police last week at a west side apartment complex. He's been identified as Victor Sanchez. Yeah, the incident actually happened last night. Pardon Today, me. our Devin Clark spoke with the mother of his one year old son who was in the apartment with Sanchez moments before he was shot. Just heard the, the shots fired. <laughs> Angelique Baron reflects on the incident that left the father of her one-year-old son, 44-year-old Victor Sanchez, shot dead by officers. Police say they had been in the area knocking on doors because of a reported burglary. By Baron's account, Sanchez may have gotten spooked. Because um, he said somebody was banging on the door, so he has my daughter call 911. Baron says she believes Sanchez fired a shot at the ground to scare the possible bad actor away and later told her and the kids to run outside. Police say investigators heard gunfire and saw the family running outside, then realized Sanchez, who was still inside, was out on bond. He was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon against Baron in a previous incident. Police say last night officers tried to get Sanchez to drop his gun, but Sanchez went further into the apartment and threatened officers with a rifle and pointed the handgun at them. SAPD says six officers opened fire, striking Sanchez multiple times. When Baron returned home this morning, she says she was surprised to see her hallway filled with pools of blood and even more surprised to count 51 bullet holes that had ripped through her home. They lied to me. They told me he was talking when they took him in the ambulance. They, they're like, ma'am, he was talking. There's no way that he could have been talking if there was that much blood. Baron admits Sanchez suffered severe mental health issues, and she's not sure what happened inside the apartment leading up to the deadly shooting. She does, though, wish the entire event could have played out differently. What if your wife or your husband had a mental issue? Did you would you expect for the cops to come over here and then just start firing and killing or killing your loved one? On the west side, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. This and another shooting where a man was killed by San Antonio police just over a week ago have led to family members of the deceased calling for police body cam footage to be released in both incidents. While police chief William McManus has vowed to review the footage, no word on if and when it will be released. The search continues for a suspect who shot a woman last night and left her on the side of the road. San Antonio police say they were sent to the 99th Street and Roosevelt Avenue area on the south side to answer the call for a shooting. There they found the woman with a gunshot wound. Witnesses in the area told police they heard gunshots. They didn't see anything. Police are investigating.
New developments in the shooting death of Breonna Taylor. One of the Louisville Metro police officers involved in that fatal shooting earlier this year has been indicted, but not directly charged in Taylor's death. Taking a live look now in Louisville, Kentucky, where law enforcement officers are now in place. They are anticipating a night of protesting over the decision. The mayor has ordered a 72 hour curfew beginning at nine o'clock tonight and lasting through 630 tomorrow morning. Today, the grand jury in that case announced charges against former officer Brett Hankins Hankinson. He is now charged with three counts of wanton endangerment in the first degree. Now, according to Kentucky law, that's when under circumstances manifesting extreme indifference to the value of human life, a person wantonly engages in conduct which creates a substantial danger of death or serious physical injury to another person. Hankinson is the only officer charged in Taylor's shooting. Still, none of the officers have been charged with causing her death. We want full transparency. We want the truth. Breonna Taylor's death should not be swept under the rug in any way. Her life matters. Taylor was shot and killed inside her apartment on March 13th. Officers were there to execute a search warrant over a drug operation involving her ex-boyfriend. Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron says today the use of force by the two other officers accused of shooting into the 26-year-old's apartment was found to be justified. Brianna's boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, who was with her the night she was killed, is suing the city and the police department. He says neither he nor Brianna heard the officers announce themselves before he fired a warning shot, which struck one officer. He represents a trailblazer for women. Justice Ginsburg wasn't just a fighter for progressive women. She was a fighter for all women. She paved the way for women's rights, reproductive rights, LGBT rights, and so much more. So it's, it's important that the next person replacing her follow her legacy. People paying their respects to Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the late justice lying in repose at the Supreme Court for a two day event honoring her life and her legacy. Friday will mark one week since her death. And as Camila Bernal reports, political leaders are still at odds over when her successor would be named. Camila. Hey, Ursula, so that is happening over at the Capitol here at the Supreme Court. We're seeing people coming together. We just saw Vice President Mike Pence about a half an hour ago with his wife. They were here to pay their respects. And over the two days, we expect thousands, including people from the public, who are making that line just to be as close as possible. And when they get here, they won't just see that casket with the American flag at the top of the steps, but they'll also see the, her former law clerks who will be with her 24-7. They're taking shifts and they will be with her even when she goes inside of the court tonight. And so these are the people who say they've learned lessons from her, not just about the law, but also about life. These are the people who will likely also carry on her legacy. For the final time, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg returning to the Supreme Court. Among the words that best describe Ruth, tough, brave, a fighter, a winner, but also thoughtful, careful, compassionate, honest. An army of more than 100 of her former clerks stood watch over her casket, some taking it up the stone steps leading to the Great Hall, where the liberal icon presided for almost 30 years. She will live on in what she did to improve the law and the lives of all of us. And yet, still, Ruth is gone and we grieve. Politicians and the public paying their respects. She was a fighter for all women. But on Capitol Hill, Republicans quickly working to fill Justice Ginsburg's seat before the election. And Democrats already vowing retaliation. Everything is on the table. This is a gigantic mistake in abuse of power. 
senators are strategizing over the open Supreme Court seat and pondering the person President Trump may pick. The president's put forward a list of incredibly talented potential nominees, including Indiana's own judge, Amy Coney Barrett. We have not had a Supreme Court justice from Florida. Barbara Lagoa is a qualified jurist. The president will be at the Supreme Court Thursday, paying tribute to the legendary life of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And she will be the first woman Supreme Court justice to lie in repose here at the Supreme Court. Remember, Senator Day O'Connor was the first uh, woman to be named to the Supreme Court, but she is still alive. Ruth Bader Ginsburg is also going to be the first woman to lie in state at the Capitol on Friday. And then we do expect President Trump to make that announcement on Saturday on who will replace her. Steve, Ursula. Hey, Camilla Bernal live from the Supreme Court. Thank you, Camilla. And the clouds stuck around today, and that helped our temperatures to stay in the lower 80s. We had a high of 83 in San Antonio, but wide-ranging temperatures out there as a result of some folks getting a lot of sunshine and others having the clouds. 81 in town, dew point is 66, so we still feel the humidity. You get out in Del Rio, 91 degrees. 81 in Rock Springs, 86 in Divine, then we're in the 70s. Shirts, Bernie, and even Seguin in the 70s at this hour. This evening, uneventful, beautiful, actually comfortable. Uh, temperatures gradually falling through the 70s by 11 p.m. at 70, and we'll start the day tomorrow in the mid-60s. And there's going to be a warming trend, but also a potential cold front to talk about. All that coming up. Thanks, Adam. The pandemic adding extra stress for students applying for college. Many have not been able to make it to testing centers to take their SATs and ACTs. So that's why many colleges across the nation have made it optional to send in standardized test scores, meaning admissions offices are reviewing applicants based on other factors like grade point average and the rigor of high school class schedules. This goes for public and private universities like UTSA and Trinity University. We ended up adopting a three-year test optional policy. Especially in light of the fact that there's not really a suitable online administration of the, the SAT and ACT as of yet. Um, so, you know, we're just trying to be as flexible as possible. Both UTSA and Trinity are including the optional test score a submission for scholarship applications as well. Both admissions leaders say that this is a fluid situation, though, and they advise students and parents to call colleges in advance and find out what is their current protocol. The 2020 school year's up the use of technology for both kids and parents as well, and it's not just schoolwork that's keeping kids busy online. Apps that help kids interact with others extremely popular and while keeping kids connected can be beneficial, it can also be dangerous and that's where parents step in. It allows children new ways of interacting with others, but technology can come at a cost. Watch what is shared. Predators can take information and use it on their prey. The name of their school that they have practiced every day at a certain time or for older kids, something as simple as venting online about their parents can be dangerous because predators are now looking at those vulnerabilities in a child. OK, so you're lonely. You want someone else. That's that's telling me that you are not getting the attention that you are seeking and maybe I can fill that void. Casey Bain with the Stephanie V. Blank Center for Safe and Healthy Children at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta says to set boundaries for when kids can be online and for which apps you allow them to use. Parents should also get the same apps so they're familiar with how they work. It's important to have conversations about what rules you're setting and why you're setting them. Have your children's password and let them know they're being monitored out of concern for safety. We want to know who that person's friends with and we want to monitor that really closely. But as a child gets older, they may have a little bit more freedom. Finally, remind children not to talk online with people they don't know. Parents should also be cautious of what they're sharing online. Giving away too much information on social media could also pose a risk to your child. Up next at five, where there's kids, there's stains, messy meals, playing outdoors. Kids can find a way to get just about any item of clothing dirty. We're going to show you how to get stains out next. I want to bring you some breaking news now live from Sky 12. There is a fire at Quintana and Casson Road. You can see what looks like just from first glance that it may be a junkyard of some type. Uh, again, you can see an active fire in what looks like 
old vehicles. Again, this is Quintana and Casson Road, not far from New Laredo Highway and I-35. We'll have more information as soon as it comes in. If you've got kids, you've got stains. Whether they're playing in the yard or coloring or eating a snack, they find the weirdest ways to get evidence of all of that. 12 on your size, Marilyn Morris, with some ways to help you clean it all up. Chocolate. It's garbage sauce. If it stains, it's a good bet your kids' clothes will find it. To clean them up, it helps to act fast. If the stain is still fresh, water alone may actually remove it. But if you're a little too late and the stain is set, a few household items and a good detergent to pre-treat stains can help. For colorful crayon stains, fresh or melted, experts say remove as much of the crayon pieces as you can. Then use dish detergent and work it in. After a few minutes, rinse and then wash in the hottest water that fabric allows. Use regular laundry detergent and an oxygenated bleach like OxyClean. Air dry only and repeat if the stain is still there. For Play-Doh, do not use hot water. Once the Play-Doh dries, brush it loose and wash by hand with detergent and cold water. <laughs> to tackle grass stains, work in detergent with a toothbrush. After a few minutes, toss it in a warm wash. Same goes for chocolate. Chocolate is surprisingly difficult to remove. For the best odds, CR recommends using OxyClean Max Force, a pre-treater for all those tricky kid stains like grass and chocolate. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, still a little overcast today, but nothing to complain about. Yeah, we're starting to see the clouds clear out a little yeah. bit right now, but the clouds really kept our temperatures down a bit, which I heard from many folks they enjoyed, especially with that north breeze. Let's take a look at the aquifer. I want to show you this. It's been nice since our recent rainfall. We've come up above the 660 mark, which is good, and our 10 day average is above 660, but we still are in stage one restrictions as it takes a little time to pull out of them. We'll, of course, keep you updated on that situation. But I'll tell you right now, no good rain chances anytime soon. We'll see a, about a 10% chance on Sunday and the same story Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. But that Tuesday, Wednesday would be the result of a cold front that I know some folks are, would be looking forward to. Here's a look at the visible satellite imagery. You see extensive cloud cover, especially in the hill country and east of I-35. You go farther to the west along the Rio Grande, another day in the lower 90s because they had the sunshine. And the remnants of beta... Now moving from Louisiana into Mississippi and pushing all that moisture and rainfall up into Tennessee and parts of the southeastern U.S. Look at the high temperatures today from 72 in Dallas, 71 in Shreveport to 91 in Laredo. Brownsville topped out at 92 and Del Rio had a high of 91. So a big difference between who had the sunshine and who was stuck under the clouds throughout the day. We were a bit of a mix here at 83 degrees, but definitely more clouds than sun to keep our temperatures running below average, average being 88. So it was an afternoon five degrees below average. And I believe that's actually the fifth day of a high temperature that's been below average. The record today, 99 set back in 2005. You know, it's that time of year finally where if we were to hit triple digits, usually that would be a record breaking day and no triple digits in sight. Uh, -uh. We're looking at low 90s max as we get into the weekend. So right now, 79 in New Braunfels, under the cloud 76 in Gonzales, LaGrange 77, but then Uvalde 91 along with Carrizo Springs and a little bit warmer in Catula at 93. So wide ranging temperatures because they're all sunshine dependent. However, we're all feeling a bit of humidity in the air with these dew points in the 60s. And those aren't going to change until the approach of that cold front by next week, about this time next week. So beautiful evening. Partly cloudy, temperatures gradually falling through the 70s, and I think the wind's going to calm down as well. It's out of the north at 5 to 10, but you're not going to notice it the rest of the night. We'll start the day tomorrow at 66, so a nice morning, becoming sunny, and I think we'll have a lot more sunshine tomorrow than what we saw today. So a little bit warmer, mid-80s in San Antonio, but of course warmer a little bit into the lower 90s along the Rio Grande. Pretty cut and dry here through the weekend. Decent amount of sunshine will be up near 90 degrees and then that potential cold front Tuesday, Wednesday time frame of next week could really impact our temperatures by next Wednesday. Thank you, Adam. Look at that back to 90s.
All right, the Cowboys haven't exactly been front runners. No, not really. at all. And you can't afford to do that against a team like Seattle. Maybe Atlanta, who has a history of letting people back in games, right? Also, we come back with sides of Cowboys needing that fast start. Another, a Hall of Famer passes away coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. For the third time in his career, Dak Prescott has been named the NFL's Offensive Player of the Week. That's after he led the Cowboys in their incredible comeback to beat the Falcons 40-39 to on Sunday. In doing so, Dak threw for 450 yards, which is the third most in his career, and became the first player in NFL history to throw for more than 400 yards and score three rushing touchdowns. And in doing so, outscored the Falcons 30-10 to in the second half. But head coach Mike McCarthy warns against a slow start against Seattle, who's averaging 36.5 points a game. It's important for us to go get that first road win, and, and that's really the message and the focus of our football team. And, and you know, our, our biggest, you know, dose of energy and, and focus is really, you know, focus on the things we need to be better. We, uh, we you know, we need we need to start faster. We we need to get into the game quicker, and it, and it's more about being assignment clean and getting our timing and rhythm going. Seahawks are five-point favorites over the Cowboys on Sunday for the 3.25 p.m. kickoff. And no, Demarcus Lawrence did not practice today. When the Houston Texans travel to Pittsburgh to take on the undefeated Steelers this Sunday, they will be three-and-a-half-point underdogs. That's after losing their first two games with the Chiefs, 34-20, to and to the Ravens, 33-16. to But if you look at that glass half full, that's better than being nine-point and seven-point underdogs in their first two games. we got to get going here this week. we got to score more points than the other team. Um, basically, you know, let's just everybody, coaches, players alike, just try to do the next right thing, you know, get the call, execute the call, make sure we're on top of everything, substitutions, all that, and eliminate turnovers and, and you know, line of scrimmage penalties, stop the run better. Um, I thought we stopped the run for three quarters, but you got to play four quarters, you know, and same thing offensively. We, we got to be more consistent. We got to stay on the field and, you know, we have to we have to work hard to get better. Yeah, the run defense is terrible. Kickoff on Sunday, except for high noon in Pittsburgh. The NFL Players Association is investigating reports that the team doctor for the Los Angeles Chargers accidentally punctured the lung of quarterback Tyrod Taylor before their game Sunday while trying to administer a painkiller shot for Taylor's cracked ribs. That's why Justin Herbert unexpectedly got the start against Kansas City. And we mourn the loss of the Bears Hall of Fame running back Gail Sears today, who passed away at the age of 77 after battling dementia. Even those who didn't follow football that closely knew of Sears from the movie Brian's Song, in which his friend Brian Piccolo died of cancer. One of the all-time great running backs. And, and his, really his career cut short due to knee injuries. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Craig. Yeah. We'll be right back. Tomorrow morning, widespread 60s, but if you're in the hill country, we're looking at some upper 50s at sunrise. Then into the afternoon, we'll have a little extra sunshine, so we're thinking low 90s closer to the Rio Grande and about 88 around San Antonio, and temperatures fall off a little bit as you head closer to Houston. Hey, by this time next week, we could be looking at a cold front that could have a big impact on our conditions. It looks great, Adam. Thank you, and thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. World News up next. See you back here at 6.